Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 799, Fasten Armor for Flighting, recorded live on September 30th, 2021. Hello everyone, welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Dust Storm. I'm your co-host, Godzilla T. And I'm your co-host, Hoss. And we have quite a bit of news to talk about, and we've got another flight coming this weekend. Lots of good stuff with Halo Infinite happening. I think we're all pretty excited about all the uh, playtime that we're getting with Infinite. Um, I know we all spent some time this past weekend getting our hands on some of the arena training for the bots and then some of the arena matchmaking which all of our play dates for the past week were in so let's just go ahead and, and jump on into that uh, with gt and dragon friday and seeing how flighting went for went for friday yeah did you max out your party yeah um we did um Makes most sense. everybody grouped up. Uh, I had a party for for most of the night. Uh, was waiting to s- waiting for Dust to jump on so we could uh, run two lobbies, but he never did. So, yeah, I had uh, other other plans, which ended up taking longer than I had anticipated. Thus, the life of IT. Yay! Yeah, server upgrades and re-racking server equipment. Pins knows what I'm talking about. So, anyways, uh, how many you, games do you guys actually get in? Because the flight times were four hours. So, <laughs> how long did you go for? I, I, well, we went we went until about ten o'clock. Okay. Uh, my time. So that'd be eleven, 11. Eastern. So probably about two and a half, three hours. Yeah. Quite a few games. Yeah, we uh, we got several games. I like I said, I didn't keep track of them. I we just kept playing. Very nice. Uh, overall impressions from your play sessions? Mm, some changes need to be made. <laughs> I I feel you there. Um, the there are some things that uh, need a little tuning. Melee is one of them, <laughs> especially the BXB. Yeah, melee. The, the glitch fix that needs to be fixed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind having the BXB to do a double melee. That's fine, but when you can repeatedly do it like fifty times in a row, oh, it's just that, a match. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's something that will probably get fixed. They did. They, they did already comment that it's being fixed. Yeah, it's probably good. And I just would like I tested it whenever I was doing the bots thing, and you can just smash buttons and it'll like there's not even a skill timing to do it you just mash buttons and it works yeah and they somebody did say that that is taken out i think it was quinn he did tweet that that is already out of the game in the in studio build right now so yeah that makes sense that's good that makes sense because it's, it's a bug i mean it's not intended to be there so hello venture jones welcome to the stream and yes you got your sub from pins he gift gift bomb 10 at the beginning of the broadcast tonight so welcome welcome okay before we get too far into this podcast does your trainer have any tips on the uh limit or the elite series 2 infinite controller tonight so he he actually sent me one yesterday for the microsoft store listing but i was in the middle of my run when i got it so unfortunately none tonight but he will he said today that he'd continue to be on the lookout and will send us stuff as he gets it. He, he follows a couple of different Twitter accounts um, and just is gets notifications for those. So he said that he will continue to pass them along. And I did mention that we are looking to get a second Xbox as possibly a giveaway for some time in the, the holiday season. So we will, if we get a hold of that, then 
we'll do a giveaway for an infinite console or an elite controller but something hopefully right uh, but the nothing don't beat us to it right but nothing tonight that was that was yesterday so we'll we'll see what goes uh, so stay tuned you, we might have another gt and haas and duster Ma- trying to mash by <laughs> a controller or console. Pre order. Pre order. Pre order. Pre order. Yep. Oh. Yep, exactly. Uh, well, very nice. We'll get into a little bit more details on what we think about the flighting, but nice to hear that Friday went well. Haas, how about you? Do you I, I know you hopped on for some bot arena on Thursday night, but did you have a chance to hop in for some actual arena multiplayer? I got to play Friday night and a little bit during the day. Um, and then I played four matches on Sunday and that was it. Okay. It was, it was short lived, but, uh, I did get a little yeah, slim pickings. I'm hoping this week for me will be a little bit more available. I plan to be more mm-hmm. available. This, my wife and I have been just going nonstop for the past month, month and a half. So we're kind of hopeful fully taking this weekend as a kind of rest and recuperate and do our own thing type of a weekend. So I think flighting will be in my future for this weekend. If not tomorrow, definitely on Saturday and Sunday, I will, I will be nice. flighting. Yep. Uh, for achieving halo, we also did some flighting. We got uh frizzled in on a couple of matches. Prestige was there and who else did we get? We had a couple of people rotate in and out, but it was it was for sure me and Prestige, and then uh, Frizzled was there for a few games, and then we got some other folks that rotated in. Um, for the most part, it was it was pretty fun. The controls. Wh- what do you guys think about the controls? Uh, at least on controller, because it still, I still have not found a sensitivity that matches what I feel like. Halo 5 or MCC really represent. You want to go first, GT? And there goes GT. <laughs> okay, well then I'll... I'll, I'll Wait for GT the, to come back. I'll take that away for a minute. Um, I did not... So the first test, I actually felt like I got the controller dialed in. The second test, I, I, I was committed to mouse and keyboard. I was just getting frustrated, so I switched back mm-hmm. to controller... I was doing better, but it just didn't feel right. The only the, the only gun that felt right to me out of everything that I used was the battle rifle, and even that felt off compared to the first test. And I don't know if that's because the PC performance improved or what mm. it was, but just something wasn't clicking. And uh, there's been a big aim assist conversation going on. I definitely felt that. And, and, you know, I was talking to one, one of my friends, and it looks like Halo. The guns sound like they're part of Halo. It didn't feel like Halo when I was with, with the controller or the mouse and mm. keyboard in hand. And, I, and, and, like, if you were like, what does that mean? That means the, the controls that we've come to know. Like, every Halo's felt different, but this just felt too disconnected um especially with the aiming movement wise was okay but aiming just didn't have that that halo to it and you're just talking about more of the the feeling of movement mechanics right not necessarily the like the gameplay itself right um I, 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 like gun, for, for beha- right gun behavior aiming th- that part of it okay um and that i i think what that can kind of be attributed to is the visible bloom the now guns recoil to help balance the mouse and keyboard. And I do think aim assist has been way tuned down, especially on controller. Oh, it has compared to other halo games. And that is, that is going to be a, I think it's going to be a long standing conversation point for this game as we approach launch and probably even through launch because they're already talking like, hey, they're, they're, they see the feedback and they're looking into it, but that doesn't necessarily mean a change is coming because maybe this very well could be by design and very intentional. So I, th- I th- that's where I was. I think the reduction of aim assist is it seems intentional. 
Mm-hmm. It was, it's kind of funny looking at some of the discussions that were happening on social media over the past week because there was that one clip of a streamer going a like stepping away from their console and you see the aim assist kind of kick in and then Quinn had to jump in on that conversation and it's like yeah it kind of makes sense like what's going on because mm-hmm. that that's how aim assist has been in Halo for for some time time right now and it's not that aggressive like people were saying it, this is completely broken that it's looks like, pretty wild i mean it went horizontal then vertical i mean yeah pretty, it, sure pretty noticeably but but like if you're in the middle of a firefight i don't think it, like <laughs> to hear people are I saying didn't feel that in game i did not yeah. feel what was in that video in game well I can and, and, to, you and to say that well, so my point in being you have this one example where okay, aim assist is is probably kicks in a lot more easier in infinite, but it might not be nearly as much compared to other Halo games. So it's like okay, you're taking one extreme and the other extreme. So there's obviously a middle ground that people are are saying that both are happening. So there's probably a sweet yeah, they, spot that people just are not realizing. It's I feel there. like they've definitely tried to downsize the aim assist especially since there's going to be cross play mm-hmm. which they haven't really clarified exactly how that's going to work in matchmaking uh i thought they i thought well, they, they did say they, that they, was based they, did, on input. they said social and ranked so social was going to be completely open but ranked was going to be input based input based but then when hcs announced that they're going to be completely open does that mean hcs playlists are going to be not ranked and they're going to be only social like so wait maybe H- hcs is going to be keyboard mouse and controller mix? and control it's going to be completely open really? to the play- player's choice that, that was like three or four months ago that they announced that so i don't know about that that uh, i mean they i feel like keyboard and mouse can wipe the floor more times than not with compared to controller see i uh, but uh, um, that's they, a delicate I, I, balance between Controller, they don't want to run two different tournaments. No, I, I get that. But that's a lot of weight to carry on your auto-aim system. And Quinn came out, and, like, when this whole video came out, Quinn did say that the second that there is a detection of mouse movement or keyboard input, auto-aim turns off. And then, like, once the controller comes back on, it takes about half a second for that auto-aim system to kick back in. So at least there is something there that does kind of cancel that out if if you're trying to go between controller and mouse keyboard. There's actually a famous, or not maybe necessarily famous, but maybe an infamous clip from Halo Outpost where someone that was playing the Reach builds was using mouse and keyboard for everything until they got to a sniper and they, they switched over to controller for a sniper. And then when they were done with their sniper, they went back to mouse and keyboard. Well, for for totally one of like backwards, the, but interesting. For one of the MCC tournaments, uh, that that they were. Oh, doing. I do remember that. I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. So I mean, I go like, will something like stuff, that but... in HCS be allowed? I don't think they're gonna allow that, but I do think they're gonna allow each user to have the input of their choice. And which they... I also think means they're gonna have to carry their devices with them. But. <sighs> Don't you want to standardize devices? You know what? I personally, to me, because keyboards, you could bring a keyboard with macros. You could. I, and, Would that be? You a- know, I, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how they balance all that. But I do. I think they are being progressive in a good way in trying to unify an entire player base, an entire community. You know, regardless of input, I, I'm okay with that. As long as they can balance it and a lot of these gameplay features, the bloom, the recoil, which just is not not something I love in Halo personally, but I understand it's it's need now. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see it kind of like come together, you know? Yeah, I I, I'm I would be very, very surprised if they allow people to bring their own equipment as far as mouse keyboard and. Especially in the current environment we are in, I, I can't imagine they're not gonna 
let people bring their own equipment and just keep it on yourself. I mean, they do it with controllers. You you got to figure out how to, I mean, macros can definitely. Well, it, it, I mean, uh, I guess I just don't assign them to my keyboard, but is there onboard memory on a lot of keyboards and you mice? Can, you can get onboard memory macros for mice and keyboards. Yeah, they exist. I mean, if there's no button glitches, maybe it's not that big of a deal. I, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, we'll really, <laughs> well, it, it's going to be interesting to watch this play out, especially during the first tournament. But. Well, I mean, like with the mouse, like you could just hit a button. Like if you know someone's behind you, you can basically just instant 180 just mm -hmm. by a button click instead of moving your mouse over. So I, I'm sure there's like whenever they release the handbook, they will probably be able to dig more into what those specific rules are. It's just a yeah. lot, lot of questions of, well, how is this going to work? And how is this going to work? And, mm -hmm. and I guess to kind of pick up on a conversation that we started before the, the podcast, they did announce that the first HCS Halo Infinite tournament is a week after and a week before, or a week after Halo Infinite's launch and a week before Christmas. Yep. Which uh. kind of sucks for some because, I mean... That kind of screws up probably half the team's holiday plans for for one. And then mm -hmm. I I'm of the opinion that that seems just a little too premature to host an event a week after a game launches. Um I if this was like an officially well, okay, it's a it's an official HCS event, but if it was It's not tied to a is, series. But. If it's not part of the series or the season, you know, and it's more an exhibition with a nice cash prize to it, you know, I, I'm kind of okay with it because everybody is going to be pretty fresh to the title. The meta isn't going to be like super evolved where a lot of players, you know, the, sk the skill curve hasn't had time to really develop. You know, there's obviously going to be good players, bad players and beyond. But, you know, I, I do think it's it's a fun promotional piece for your your brand new game to get out there date kind of sucks i'll be honest i think the location's great especially with the history there sure. for halo um i mean that was a huge halo 3 venue for mm -hmm. multiple seasons um and i even think reach and two had a couple events there so i i like every everything around it i think is a good thing for halo infinite I, I, I'm a firm believer this holiday season of first person shooters, the Titans are going to be bringing their big boy gloves and duking it out for your, our attention and Halo, Halo wants to be, this is an aggressive play from three, four, three and Microsoft and I fully support it. So let, let's get this title constantly on the timeline. You know, you you're going to be riding the hype of launch a week later, and then you can go, boom, here's our first event. Come tune in at twitch.tv forward slash ACS or Halo or whatever it is going to be. YouTube, you know, the works. And then you'll you'll have a whole nother week of content and promotion going into Christmas. You know, every person gets a Steam or Xbox gift card during Christmas, and they just watch this tournament go on and... Maybe they're like, hey, let, let's try this game out. Or maybe I want to buy the Sentinels team pack. Or, you know, there, there's a lot of promotional ability you can do here to kind of maybe get like a, a second wave of launch window sales. I just think it, given some of the previous history that we've had with 343 game releases and multiplayer working and all those initial tournaments on the games, I'm just like a week after launch. Like, I I hope three four three has learned their lessons about making sure matchmaking is working. And and granted, I think these flights are 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 meant to help gauge that. And I I don't recall really hearing any or many matchmaking issues going into this flight. So maybe they kind of have it figured. The only out. one I've had is the same one from the very first flight where you launch the party of four into matchmaking and somebody doesn't get in. I but. After the first flight, they did say they've addressed that, so I don't know if this is kind of like a similar build without that being addressed in it. 
or what, but that that's the only matchmaking issue I've really run into. There's been a couple networking issues, but they said there is an update for PC on this flight to mm-hmm. help that side of it. So, you know, the I am as sick to my stomach thinking about Halo 4, especially MCC's launch, even Halo 5's launch to a point. I'm just, I'm really, I'm really hoping that that rumored budget for this game and all that has really built systems around that we can have a smooth launch and this game can roll out to the masses. I mean, it, the first three days of this game are going to have huge numbers. There's no, yeah, no doubt about that to me, you know, long term, we'll see, but the day one numbers are going to be huge and there's going to be a lot of eyes on this game, which I think we would have seen with MCC and Halo 5 had those games kind of launched smoother. Right. Especially MCC's, I think, affected Halo 5's. But... Well, and and I, I guess to take a look at what some things they've already come out with saying that there's no co-ops at all for campaign and no Forge, at least it seems like they've made the decision to make sure that there is stability for the game at launch versus having all the features in there. So that does make me hopeful that the game at launch will be stable. Mm -hmm. And with all the flighting, they're probably getting enough info to balance things out. And they've already been actively saying that, yes, this is going to be fixed or has already been fixed in the bill. We've already identified this as an issue. I just, I don't know. There's there's a part of me that just is like taking that first step is very like based on past experience is very trepidatious and very uneasy going into like <laughs> the game being out for only a week. I I absolutely so. I, I on that level of concern, I am 100% with you. But if if 343 and the HCS team and the Halo team and the esports engine team are confident in it, then yeah, whatever whatever you you create, this is the bed you're gonna lay in. There, there's a yeah. lot to gain if it goes well. There's also quite a bit to lose if it doesn't. Yep. So we'll have to see how that goes, and we also have to see how many maps there are because if it's just four or five or maps or so at launch, then that can get really repetitive. And how many game modes are there? We know of three. We know of Slayer, CTF, and Strongholds. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that they're going to have more maps at launch than we saw with Halo 2 Anniversary content. I think also a lot of those tournaments would have still been fun to watch had that game worked out the gate <laughs> <laughs> can we it's like can we take the mcc now and put it back to 2014 right right and you know it's just there's a lot of missed opportunity back then we don't need to completely rehash that but uh right we do we just need to hope that halo has really learned from those lessons they're gonna have a content rich i mean even with what they've scrapped for launch which still is hard to stomach you have to hope that the multiplayer suite is going to be content rich at launch for the core halo experience as they say with you know just 4v4 8 or 12v12 mm-hmm. now you know we, we got to hope that those modes are going to be content rich out the gate for players to really have time and you know a variety of ways to play this game and we'll see yeah can't be a halo 5 either where it was no three game modes and how long did it take to get oddball in there like two plus years it, it longer than it should have <laughs> yeah. and we don't have any forge going into it i mean yeah we don't even have any forge stuff going into no forge basic custom game editor is what we can probably guess is like weapons on map you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yep. It's not going to be go in and put a BR here, BR there. Yeah. And Pins is saying, big concern is how secure are the servers? How susceptible, how susceptible are they to DDoS? Yeah. And will they even, will, will they, I mean, they probably will do something similar to the Halo 5 server where they have that local server instance for 
things like tournaments that they can do. That'd be my guess. But I figured that was a very useful thing because you can at least, like if Xbox Live were to go down for, well, I guess everything's still tied into live, but if you have a low bandwidth issue, then you could at least have that server local. So there, there is a benefit to that, at least. Yep. So for the first code giveaway, we are giving away Halo Infinite codes. For people here in the chat, go ahead and put in what's your favorite weapon in Halo Infinite so far that you've played, and we'll give that code away here in a few minutes. To answer that question, Haas, what's your favorite weapon so far in the sandbox? Battle rifle. Battle rifle. Tried and true. It's the only, it's the only one that feels right. Tried and yeah. true. That AR, though, is pretty nice. I am upset with the AR. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What, what, I, what's got you okay. so triggered on I, the AR? I, I, okay. Pun intended. I, <laughs> I like that the AR is an effective weapon. It absolutely needs to be. And I also don't think the BR should be the ultimate use weapon that basically outdoes every gun in the sandbox. I, I I am completely there. I think the AR, if it's going to have the range it has, especially when you pace your shots, it does not need to have the range that it has. There's like no bullet drop off, it seems, on a, on a lot of these guns if if the accuracy stays there. And to me, in the Halo sandbox, AR has always been a close range weapon with a drop off of damage in the medium range. Hmm. Right now it feels like it's a medium range weapon on the battle rifle level of distance and stuff. So I uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just not in love with it. It's one of those things I think because here's another thing. The community's been clambering for BR starts and I don't think I think that's a very vocal minority that it we really don't necessarily need BR starts all the time. I don't either. And given the, I, I do think in competitive it, it 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 definitely has its place. But for, you know, your core multiplayer right now, no. BTB it's tough to I don't know what the answer is for BTB cuz I don't like the uh not the magnum whatever it is i don't the like sidekick. the pistol the side i don't like the sidekick at all and i almost that's always the first gun i drop and the ar i just it's going to be interesting to see that gun play out on a big team map against vehicles again you know right right now when i i play on bizarre if the other team gets the battle rifle first I already I do feel at a disadvantage in most cases. But I do feel like the AR can combat the BR a little bit mm -hmm. if the team especially is unorganized. But it's gonna be really interesting to see it play out in BTB. because uh, that's what we're gonna get first taste of is this week AR sidekick. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure people will be very vocal if it doesn't feel right. They did say it's a possibility they might Put on BR starts to let people feel that. But then I also kind of feel like the BR might be too powerful in that in that environment from what I've seen of the BR. I think we're at a point in Halo's lifespan with the BR that BR starts is just too effective. Mm -hmm. it, it you're just it gives too much power to players at the start of a match and in a way, it kind of kills that map control mm -hmm. in, in some aspects. Not, not necessarily in all aspects, but in some aspects, you lose some of that needing to go out and get those power weapons and, and really move around the map and control the map, where if you're starting with a BR, you're more f controlling spawns and you're more free to take a specific position that it more favors your play style instead of actually having the map kind of dictate where those power points are. Yep. So it's, it's part of that give and take, but I, if we really want the game to be that 
be that point that really drives the the game forward as far as how the playing goes it i think you have to do ars i I think that's just what you have to stick with yeah until we see a sandbox option that is gonna be viable that maybe we haven't seen yet or maybe comes into tuning or update later yeah i agree it's just where we are right now I don't know if we're going to see, you know, a traditional Magnum or a different AR or SMG or maybe a new rifle that we don't even know about. We'll see. We'll yep. s- we'll see. We'll see what comes. Yep. Yeah, we haven't seen the full sandbox yet, so. No. Correct. Uh, and even. You know, balance that with uh, what else is coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to judge at this time. So, you know, I do agree with the fact that the sidekick is underwhelming. It is useful in skilled hands, but it is very unforgiving. Right. I feel like if the aiming was a bit better and actually felt more like other Halo aiming that we would have had in the past. I don't think it would be as much of an issue for me to act like if I could actually aim it, I think it would be an effective weapon, but it really boils down to who can actually, who has actually figured out the aiming system and who can actually do that aiming compared to everyone else who like me, who's floundering on trying to figure out what setting actually works for controller sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I don't know what the answer is to that. I know three, four, three has said that there's some, aiming issues that they're trying to figure out and, and resolve and they've heard that people have issues with it but to to have the aiming that different from past halo games really is kind of making me wonder why did they change it what what did they change for the aiming system that makes it so different that my out of the box aiming doesn't even feel like out of the box for every other halo game that's come out yeah i'm I mean, maybe, but I feel like other games have other franchises have switched engines and still been able to maintain the feel of their predecessors. Yeah, because aiming is just acceleration curves and which they should have the tuning done. I, I will say that. But I mean, that would be the reason you know that I would think that the aiming feels different is because they haven't got the new engine tuned to the same feel as the old engine. And it might not be something as simple as copy paste. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes, it's acceleration curves. Yes, it is you know, all this other stuff, but the way the system processes that information and the speed at which the system processes that information could be totally different. Technically. Yes. But with how, to to oversimplify <laughs> what we're talking about here with how simple aiming is where it's just taking a a value and converting it to okay how many how much am i moving in in the world xyz coordinate to have it be that different they're either massively changing stuff which not sh- not sure why they would do that or there's something else in the underlying system that's not working the way they want it to well i'll tell you this much with every single halo game i have to adjust my aiming it's not that consistent between games i mean i I do too but there's at least a point where i can get into a rhythm of okay like i i hone in on getting that feel back so like jumping between mcc and halo 5 there's obviously a little bit of a difference but I've got them configured enough to where that difference is small enough where after a couple of games, I'm right back into the nuance of that aim uh, aim system. But for Infinite, I have no inkling to MCC or Halo 5. I have like the whole horizontal and vertical and then this, the acceleration. I haven't figured out what I need to change to actually get something that's at least close to what I play with in Halo 5 or MCC. Yeah, I I completely on controller agree. on controller. 
I will, I will clarify that because I haven't done mouse and keyboard as much. I'm getting better at it. Um, it's still kind of foreign to me as far as um, the feeling. But, you know, it usually takes me a, a good week of play to really get tuned in on a particular um, control Game. scheme for you know, where I feel comfortable with it. The, um, you know, that's why I generally jump into campaign first so I can, I can really get the feel of the game before I jump into multiplayer. Now, some I pick up quicker than others, like Halo 4 I picked up, you know, it was, uh, you know, a couple of days mm-hmm. before I felt comfortable in it. Same with, you know, same with Reach. But Halo 3, uh, it took me a little longer to get the feel for Halo 3 than it did any other games. Halo 3's system was, is still... And, you know, I'm not even talking about the bullets. I'm just talking about the feel of the aim. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. Um, so I'm willing to give them a little latitude on that particular point. I do do say it does need some more adjustment before launch. You know, it's it all could be. I I don't know the reasoning behind it, and I'm not going to even theorize the reasoning behind it. But it, you know, it may yeah. it may be something we may just have to get used to. It may have to yeah. play around with this to get it to feel closer to what we expect it to feel like. And yeah, that that very well is probably the case. It just it's frustrating that it's not more akin to past sensitivities out of the box. Because my sensitivity, my sensitivity from default Halo from the past is is just a tad more sensitive. So like, if the default was three, my sensitivity is four. So like it's not that far off, but no, my spreads a little bit further than that. Yeah, I mean that's, but 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 still, it's it's kind of one of those things where I wish it was a little bit more tuned in to how previous Halos felt, so people could like make that transition without having to re, without having to learn some completely new aiming system just to, yeah. You mean like the Halo 3? No, they wouldn't need to do that. <laughs> Anyways, we probably spent enough time on the whole aiming mechanic. For other aspects of the flighting from this past weekend, did you all get the, the chance to play the the new map, uh, Behemoth? What'd you all I think played of- two matches. Okay, what did you all think of that map? For a casual PvP map, with 4v4 and, I believe, a v8 ability and scale. I think it's a fantastic map, aesthetically. Much better than what I thought we saw in the preview um, the demo the week before. Being on the map, I definitely felt more in the Halo univer- <laughs> universe. Universe. <laughs> I-, I thought it was a good map. I... I- Totally didn't get to figure out where all the weapons were and everything like that. But I did. I I really did like the flow of it, the speed of it. Um, I think for an AV8 map, it'll be just complete chaos. Or I guess it's not AV8. I keep thinking it's AV8. So 12v12 may not work. I don't know. But if it was 8v8, I definitely think it would be a fantastic map. Um, 4v4 might be a little too big, but it didn't feel that large playing it for me. So Fuchs said that for him it felt like Harvest from here before, which I'm kind of scratching my head on that because Harvest layout is very different from what I remember in Harvest. Play because, I mean, Harvest was kind of a oval when it comes to vehicle tracking with basically a pedestrian point in the mis- middle with mm-hmm. the center building. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I would agree with that. Okay. And, um, hmm. For me, four v four seems the map seems a little big for that. You know, like a six v six probably be would be really comfortable on that. Eight v eight would be uh, applicable, hmm. but I think that would be about the ma- max for it. 
Well, I wonder if 8v8 is even really going to be a thing. Because now the their new BTB is 12v12. So is, is 8v8 other outside of customs even going to be a, a thing? As far as normal matchmaking or competitive event type stuff may may go, I guess? I mean, there's probably going to be other like fan tournaments out there that do 8v8 for things that, that work, but as far as matchmaking goes, is that is that even a thing anymore? The Spider-Man map, I, I don't know. <laughs> My, I, I will say for, for me and Behemoth, when we had a couple of CTF games on Behemoth on Sunday, those vehicles are just OP for CTF. I didn't feel that way. Oh, we just got slaughtered. Like I had, I had fun in the ghost, but I felt like I was taken out rather easily once the team was focused, and we took out the Warhog really quickly in each game that I played. I mean, maybe it, the the experience will change per match depending on how coordinated your team is or not. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but I didn't. I I did see your tweet about that, and I, I personally didn't experience that same getting getting knocked down that heavily by vehicles, but that definitely does happen. I mean, even in Halo 4 when I think all the vehicles are paper mache, <laughs> yeah, there there are moments when vehicles just decimate everybody, and that could be a, a more of a team thing than an individual kind of thing. I just felt like in, in order for us to take out a vehicle, we had to focus as a team on that vehicle, and by the time we were doing that, the other two players, if, if they weren't in the hog had the flag already halfway across the map Mm -hmm. there wasn't a balance for actually having good defendability or or offense if you didn't have the warthog really if if one team had the warthog like if if one team had both vehicles you were absolutely screwed if one team had the warthog then it's not easy to unless you could get some kind of shock weapon to at least disable it and maybe take out the gunner. But even that, if, if the gunner is, is predicting where to go, like if, if they're a good shot, then they're going to be hard to take out. At least from my experience over the weekend. Mm-hmm. So, I, I based on my, and granted this is based on my personal experience from three hours of playing Infinite, definitely, vehicles definitely seemed OP in, in CTF on Behemoth. Is is that is that the David Ellis? Is 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 that the David Ellis in our chat? No. Well, well. Welcome to our little corner of the internet. It's been a while since we've seen you over over here. Long time. Welcome, welcome. So, well, I guess we'll see if there's other four v four type maps that have vehicles on them that may play play a little different. I have to definitely say, I, I guess. Give it, give it the chance that it it needs to definitely see if vehicles can can balance out. Like you were saying, Haas, you didn't really feel that it was that much of a detriment. I think a banshee would be really fun to try in the social space on that map. That'd be interesting, kind of like a, how Ascension has the banshee. I mean, Ascension's god awful, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just the one I think <laughs> of as far as like four v four, and there's a banshee on the map. That's Ascension, right? Right. So, yep. well, thanks for dropping by, David. Um, I guess since uh, since David dropped by, we'll go ahead and, and, and prompt up our second code. Uh, we already gave one away. We have four more to give away. Uh, what's everyone's favorite arena map that they played from this past weekend? And uh, based on that, we'll we'll give away a code here in a in a few minutes. Do we count Behemoth as an arena map? It was in the arena playlist, so yeah. Okay. We have so modern ar- modern arena. Got it. <laughs> From this past weekend. Favorite yes. map, last flight. There you go. There you go. Favorite map from the last flight. There we go. We got Behemoth. We got Bizarre, which I think Bizarre is... Bizarre and Recharge are, like, close to my favorites. I'm not sure which one is my favorite. I think it's... I think it's Bizarre, but the flow of Recharge is really nice. I think Bizarre is two medium-range weapons away from being a truly special map. What do you mean by t- two medium right? Re- like so they it have needs the, two more, the, or they have the the two tower? Yeah, it needs two more. Okay, 
I think, you know, the two BRs and the two um, VKs LM- up top. Yeah, the LMGs. Yeah, you just need something down below to come back that's those what guys. Yeah. Yeah, a VK Commando yep. 47 or something. Yeah, like that. there's there's the needler that spawns on like the main doors. And then I think yeah, it's I can't figure that needler out. I did in the first flight. I can't in the second flight. It's 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 rapid. It it has a rapid explosion if you land enough needles on someone. It's Yeah. It's, the, the tracking just feels it it's funky. Different. Like if you I get slaughtered by it, but Yeah, like TTK on that or time to kill is very quick if you land a majority of your needle shots compared to past halos. It's in some respects, I feel like it's faster than Halo 3. I feel yeah. like a little bit. Yeah, I'm still working on trying to figure out the uh, whole needler thing. Yeah, that and then seeing, <laughs> seeing people uh, snipe with the. What's the impaling spike gun? Gosh. Skewer? Skewer, yeah. That thing is... That's hard to use. It's hard to use, but it is rewarding. When you land a shot, it certainly is. It most certainly is. We've got... Yeah. We've got a lot to work with on that on that weapon to really nail it down. But people are out there just just sniping with it. I feel like it's kind of the the new Spartan laser in a way or the replacement for the Spartan laser. But yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I, that's one that I've got to get used to too. It it fires in a weird part of the travel of the trigger. I, I just don't know. And it arcs down, so getting that timing is is weird. I did get like, a delayed double out of Warthog on it. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Literally, I was at Ghost Spawn, shot the Warthog, it drove around to to the flag stand, and then it, it exploded, and I got a double kill. Oh, you probably put it into uh, that final death mode. Probably. I got a couple kills that way, too, this weekend. That's that's pretty cool, that, that death mode for vehicles. Mm-hmm. I forget what they, they actually call it. But it's a very cool mechanic. Yeah. Um, what are you guys' favorite maps so far for the, the arena stuff? Probably Bizarre. I really enjoy Bizarre for more of a competitive feel. Mm-hmm. But in a social place, Behemoth is up there. I'm not going to say it doesn't need some tweaks, but it, it's got real potential. Okay. I, I, I do like Behemoth. I just, my mind won't let me call that an arena map. <laughs> just because of the size yeah I think so and I, when I think arena I just generally is large competitive map which yeah. it's fine it's a it's a it's a good social space yeah and Catcro I, I think you, you probably just missed our conversation on the nuclear I think for the most part it's one of those weapons we're still trying to figure out what we think of it because we're trying to figure out still how to use it. We keep getting on the, the wrong side of the needler <laughs> and getting taken out. Definitely recognize it is a powerhouse. Yes. Yeah. It is a power weapon if you can if you can use it. If you if you figured out how to use it. But figuring out how to use it. Like I've gotten some some good kills off it, but it's pretty much just like, okay, the person's running straight in front of me. That that's not too hard to get, but if people are strafing, I still haven't quite figured out how to lead that needler shot yet. And each each Halo's needler is different. Each one. Yep. Each one. <laughs> like it's it's probably one of the most iconic weapons in the franchise, and it changes every time from game to game. <laughs> I still I still think back at the Halo two multiplayer demo on Zanzibar that Joe Staten did and he shot that needler. I was like coming from C E. I was like, holy crap, that thing is gonna be massive. And then when red when the launch came, it was like got nerfed an a insult bit. to get a kill as the infamous Walshy killing T two clip. I don't even know showed. if I've seen that one. Oh yeah yeah on Sanctuary he he killed T2 with the needler and <laughs> the crowd went nuts because it was just 
the disrespect of doing that. It's like insult to injury in a tournament. Yeah, it was uh, really something. But uh, hey, use what's got. Yeah, I mean, he did it just to really throw just to rub it in. Yeah, it it wasn't like I'm in a pinch and I need a kneeler. It was. I'm going to pick up a kneeler and just show this guy how much better. (laughs) It was pretty great. I do miss that kind of stuff, like being able to in the game, just kind of trash talk in a way without, let them know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like trash talk in the game without like trash talking. There's a word for that. I'm sure. But yeah, I didn't mind the trash talking. It's, the rest of it that I had a problem with. <laughs> right. So we, yeah, we got Behemoth, Bizarre, Life Fire, and Recharge. Yeah, I, Be- think, I think Recharge is really good. I do think it is just two guns on the bottom level away from being really that next level map. Mm-hmm. And that, that, I mean, that's a simple thing. So Recharge has good flow. Like there's a good like outer ring flow. There's a good flow inside the map to cut to different parts of it that you need to. It plays yep. really well with strongholds and slayer bazaars that is just that classic symmetrical CTF map and, yep. and slayer map. It just works. Behemoth I'm not so sure about. Life Fire, it's okay for Slayer. If there's oddball in it, I can see it being good for oddball. On the other game modes, they might be considering. But I think for the time being, Recharge and Bizarre are definitely my my top picks for for maps. For those that have just joined us, we're giving away another infinite code for people that may have not either been invited to uh, PC Flight since... Uh, Xbox Lighting, I believe, is open to pretty much everybody. But in case it's not, we are giving away a code that you can redeem on Halo Waypoint and get access to both the PC and the Xbox build of the flight for this weekend. So our latest code giveaway is for your favorite map from the arena playtest that we had for this past weekend. So Bizarre, Behemoth, Life Fire, or recharge. So drop it in the chat and we'll give away a new code here in just a second. Uh, what do you guys think of some of the the crazy play clips that we saw? Like, did you all see the one on recharge where someone repulsed someone off the cliff, but then someone used the grapple shot to come back and kill the guy? I did so not see that. It, it, was, it was pretty cool. Like, just the amount of hype that the equipment sandbox is getting in Infinite and seeing all these crazy plays is really cool to see people getting excited about. Yeah, I also watched someone get an extermination with a repulsor on recharge. <laughs> it was just like a whole team before. Oh, okay. Gravity hammer. Hit in the corner. Knocked one guy off. Knocked the next guy off. Knocks the next guy off. And then finally knocks the last guy off. That's hilarious. All with a gravity hammer? <laughs> It's like lemmings. Wee! That gravity hammer is interesting to use. It's powerful, but that wind up griff balls, the, the hammer and griff ball, I don't see how they coexist in current form, but I think it has to be a different hammer. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. Or the game of griff ball is going to be quite different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really wouldn't mind them toning down the power of the hammer and speeding up the swing. Yep. Yeah, well, I have to, yeah. If the idea is to make this new hammer kind of the de facto one, then maybe they just need a specific griff ball hammer, which wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Uh, Dirty Mike 423 thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. It's a, it's a friend of mine. Ah, very streamer, nice. Streamer, streamer friend of mine. Very so. nice. Thank you for coming in. Over and supporting Haas and in his endeavor to come back to podcast dominion. But yeah, the, the equipment stuff, just seeing all of these plays is, is really, really incredible. Like I know equipment in the past for, for Halo has been definitely one of those touchy subjects, but to see everyone embrace it and seeing all the crazy things you can do with it, it's really cool to see equipment kind of finally getting some, some shine in a modern Halo that I think works really well. 
Grapple Shot and Repulsor, though. Those are those are going to be a lot of crazy plays that we're going to see, I think. Yeah, that Repulsor has completely decimated me. I hope they keep in, in, that in embarrassing fashion. So <laughs> I hope they I keep need that to, I need to learn how to execute that thing because, boy, it, it is something to use. That is mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. I'm waiting to see if it'll repulse a tank shot. Ooh. Well, we might find out this weekend. Well, I mean, it will repel a rocket. If you time it right, it, it might. It Imagine might. Imagine repul- r- repulsing. Repulsing a, mor- a tank mortar and then it flies off to the side and kills your teammate. <laughs> oh, that actually brings, brings up something that I, I meant, meant to bring up. What do you guys think of no collision with allies? Right think now, it, I'm a because I haven't had any allies walking in front of my shot. I, I don't hate it. I, I am going to kind of miss the those plays that you were able to pull off on some maps where jump on my head and then you double jump up off and get to a different, you know, point like yeah. like on lockout or something like that. You were able to pull that off. So I'm going to miss little things like that, but I'm sure this, if, I mean, if you have those things, absolutely. And you know, I, I, this, let's be honest, this community is so crafty and creative at figuring things out that I am positive they're going to figure this out rather quickly. And I do wonder if this is just a social setting or competitive or the full game. Cause that, that'd be interesting to remove from competitive, but you know, maybe, maybe it just, that's the way the common player wants their multiplayer experience. And we long-term halo fans are kind of just not loving change. And we just kind of have to accept it. <laughs> Yep, they're always resistant to change. Uh, well, look at this run into your player that always goes the wrong way. Yeah. And when you're trying to get around that, that guy. <laughs> that one guy. Thanks for the follow, uh, Kakrao. Um, do you guys see the skewer man can re- Was that the clip from Hidden Xperia that he did? Hidden Xperia did one. There's several of them out there. I think he did that with a bots, but yeah, I, I guess you can s- shoot a skewer into the man cannon, and then the man cannon will actually just shoot the skewer back, and then you can repulse the skewer into something. Wow. These, uh, yeah, these tricks are, are somewhat ridiculous. Well, you can push the flag with a ghost or a vehicle. Yeah. It's, in, it's so interactive. interactive. Yeah, we, we did that on, on a CTF game. <laughs> That's, that's I don't know fun. if I like. It kind of takes away the cost of holding the flag. That's not not bad point. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That is an interesting mechanic. I didn't even really think about that being different. But you're right. Being able to push the flag is yeah. You can move that thing really fast. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dirty Mike asks, "What's our overall feel of Infinite so far?" Well, you've come to the right place because we're <laughs> talking about it in depth right now, at least from the past flight. Um, I think overall consensus so far is fun. Need some tweaks. Got some things that we're possibly concerned about, but all in all, we're we're feeling pretty good about it. Go ahead and give this other code away real quick. Uh, let me scroll back up to where people actually listed their maps. So Spartan said didn't need the code, but Life Fire for Spartan Zero G O One. Uh, I think, actually, you may have been one of the only ones that actually mentioned the map. <laughs> Anyone else want to mention the map that they like so far? Even if you've just watched it. Yeah. If not, uh, Spartan, you're more than welcome to give the code to a friend who may need it, may want it. Like Carl says, behemoth. Uh, what else is there to, to talk about? Flight-wise, we got a couple other things to, to touch on before uh, we head the, out for the podcast and and some other new stuff. Got an Xbox code, but you're on PC. Bacon. Okay. All right. Doesn't that work on the Xbox app on the Xbox store for PC? Or is it console Xbox specific? Because Xbox, that code should work on the PC side. So the codes that we have are, 
are well, the ones that we got from three four three are ones that you actually have to go to waypoint to redeem. Oh, okay. yeah, they're they're waypoint, they're waypoint codes, and then you actually get instructions on how to redeem it for PC and Xbox. So, but yeah, I believe pretty much everyone on Xbox now, if they're part of the, uh, all the uh, all those people are bots. Yep. But we got yeah, accidentally banned oh, Rainmaker. I did not want to ban Rainmaker. <laughs> Shoot, uh, I unbanned Rainmaker. Gosh, those pens they just had to be here? named Hoss, right? Uh, sorry, folks, we are dealing with the um, the hate bots at the moment. So give us just a second. But yeah, for the uh, most part, we have talked through the maps. We talked through the weapons. Talked about equipment a little bit. I don't think there's really anything game mode that we need to talk about because there's pretty much Strongholds, Slayer, and CTF, which we're all pretty familiar with back in from Halo 5. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, I, I don't got much right now beyond that. Uh, we can talk about the Academy or um, the training mode stuff. All the, the new features that you can do with the bots where you can hop into a map, select your primary and secondary, all your grenades, all that stuff. I, I any feedback there? Weapon for the drills. resources argument that has been presented for a long time, I'm just sour towards both of those. So, I cool, I, cool for the people that are going to use it. I don't know long term what the use is going to be. I really don't. Was the training mode up yet? Like the one where you could, there's like some kind of training course that you can go through. Was that actually up yet? Because I don't remember actually I being able to seen find that. that. No. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, BTB fighting is this weekend. We get to play on Fragmentation. Lots of play going to happen on that for sure. I believe Arena is going to be up as well for some of this. So if you still want to hit up some 4v4 matches, you can still do that amidst the BTB type stuff. So I think for this weekend, it's pretty much open to whatever you want to do during the time frames that you want uh, want to play, as long as matchmaking is open. Just a reminder, matchmaking is only open during the specified times, so it's going to be 10 to 2 Pacific time on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then 5 to 9 Pacific time on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we got six play sessions, all four-hour sessions, so plenty of time to play. We also have a new emblem, for those that actually complete 10 matches in the fighting this weekend. And then we've also got the play date that's happening tomorrow. Haas or GT, you have any more details on that one? I, I, I just know the announcement was made, but I haven't really looked into it. Uh, I know much. if you match them, you get a nice unicorn skin. Uh, you'll be one of the first in Halo Infinite to have it. And let's see. There is a YouTube like time hold for that uh at noon pacific tomorrow looks like okay so that'll be 3 p.m eastern time 8 p.m uh british summer time so it'll be a two-hour window okay so i might be able to sneak in there for a couple games we'll see how it goes i don't know how large their party is going to be probably four at the max so you have 20 options are 20 opportunities to match with them in a in a single game. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Kakrao, since you um were the only other person to mention the map, uh we'll go ahead and give you the code for this round of giveaways. So the code that we're giving away will be use redeemable on Halo Waypoint and then you'll be able to access the flight on PC or Xbox, whichever you choose. So uh, enjoy, have fun, share that code with whoever you want to. You can use it yourself if you need to. And yeah, we got a couple more codes to give away for for tonight. Uh, and I just whispered that to you. So check out your whispers on Twitch. We didn't talk about this last week. We meant to, but Haas, you want to take us through the uh, HCS Top 25 <laughs> since we forgot to talk about it last week? Um. It definitely drove interactions. It certainly did. 
It's most maybe interact maybe interactions is not the right word. It definitely drove reactions. <laughs> um, there were some definite shocks. There was some definite resentment towards some of the placements, all the pros. I think ultimately a lot of the longer term Halo pros are satisfied with Ogre 2 coming in at the one slot, uh, beating out Lethal. Um, I think the video packages they did for the top 10 were phenomenal. If you really, if you haven't watched those, go to the HCS YouTube page, give them a watch. They, they are really cool. It's a cool insight into some of the Halo history. But, I mean, quick breakdown of the top 10. You had Frosty at 10, Lunchbox at 9, Walshy at 8, which was a huge shock to a lot of people. Roy at 7, Snipe Down at 6. Royal 2 at 5, Pistola at 4, and Snipe Bite at 3. And I think those three right there were the ones that totally blew people away. Uh, a lot of people felt Pistola should have been in the top three. Him, Snipe Down, and Walshy were all kind of like considered the three, uh, where Ogre 2 and Lethal were always considered the 1 2. But yeah, that, that 3 through 10 got really crazy. <laughs> there were some there were some slots in the bottom half of the top 25 like ogre one falling to 11 t squared falling at 17 those were two of the probably bigger controversies but it it drove reactions i'll just say that you know people were talking about hcs it got eyes on hcs and the account um you had people from all different competitive communities kind of chiming in because a lot of these older halo pros especially were kind of the pioneers in the in not just halo esports but in competitive shooter esports taking it to the main stage so a lot of these people are like childhood heroes to a lot of modern esports pros and so it, it ultimately i think it was a good thing I, I my top 25 looks totally different but in the end, that's the list, and they're sticking to it. I just had this random thought. How funny would it have been if Ninja was on that list? The world would riot. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, he was I mean, a good pro. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Back in Halo 2 days, he, he, won, was, he won nothing. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Like, given his like popularity now and how he kind of got his start with, with Halo, really. And just to have kind of this come up and see how that interaction would have would have taken place. A funny, funny little story. We have a, a neighbor who um, uh, her grandson stays with with her and he's really into Fortnite, really loves Ninja. So when Free Guy came out, kind of mentioned that, yeah, I got the, to meet Ninja like back in the Halo 2, Halo 3 MLG days when I got to attend Dallas stuff. So. He he got all like starstruck when like he heard that I've actually met Ninja and and talked to Ninja before, and told him that he he was big before Fortnite. Like he got like his start in Halo and and whatnot. So, and then I have a few other people that have like through watching Free Guy also say that like, yeah I, I I've met Ninja before. <laughs> so, it's it's just interesting to to see how far. Far he's risen in in the streaming game, and just to kind of look back of like, yeah, knowing him from his roots, not from where he is today with <laughs> Fortnite and everything. So just just an interesting little tidbit, and that's a good question, uh, Kakrau. Don't know if Ninja would would come back into Halo esports. I think with his streaming career, I I don't know if esports is something that would be up up his alley or something he consider i mean he he's definitely gonna play he's Halo. teased it he's been teasing it oh but really like to yeah. legitimately compete he, he just keeps saying he's keeping eyes on it i mean we'll see what that means but i mean he's gonna play the game for sure oh yeah but there's been speculation that he's interested in a competitive return so we'll we'll see interesting it would be kind of curious to see him come back and See if he either actually plays on par with some of these other Halo pros, because I mean he's obviously 
pretty much into Fortnite right now, or if if he actually if he can hang with the pros, or if he just completely gets trashed on because everyone else has been in the game for so much longer, and he's just the popular kid, not necessarily the the good kid in Halo anymore. I mean, that's what he is in Fortnite. So, but he's been playing a lot of Apex lately too. Yeah. And then there's the continuing debate on <laughs> yeah, Dr. Disrespect dropping the Halo won't survive without a ba- battle royale. <laughs> your your boy Dr. Disrespect over there, Haas. <laughs> I'm not going to say I don't completely disagree with him. I know that's controversial in this community, but uh, <laughs> I think it would be a massive piece to the halo puzzle and its success with halo infinite yeah i don't think it's going to be there at launch i think it will if it does ever come it will be in season two or three that's what i think and i'm sticking to it yeah i, I doubt we will see battle royale I, like battle royale could even be a separate title in a way I, like if they want yeah to. absolutely could i mean that's what we've seen over on the call of duty side is they just kind of moved it off to its own thing and mm-hmm. um, separate download and all. Yep. I mean, Fortnite's really <laughs> two separate games now. The, ori- the original concept is, is not even mm-hmm. not even the, the main attraction anymore. Right. And then you've got Apex Legends, which you could say is kind of the offshoot of Titanfall for Battle Royale. Mm-hmm. I see you and Biowolf getting on Halo Infinite. Is it is was, it up or something? I was, just, I was just seeing if it was live, and it is. You are able to access and get him back into the academy. Okay. Well, we will wrap this up so people can use their codes that they just got and and hop on into some academy if if you so choose. We we touched on on this briefly, but again, there is the tournament in Raleigh, which is happening December seventeenth through the nineteenth. Tickets have gone on sale. I don't know if they've sold out yet. They were close. They were at 70% earlier. Okay. For, uh, I'm assuming just for the general attendees, not the. Yeah. VIP sold out within three minutes. Wow. And they are not planning to add any more to that. So there's that. Okay. All right. I don't think I'll be there. Uh, there's a small chance I might be. I know DJ is going. Savage Giggles is, is going got a few other friends who have said that they've got tickets and they're going i don't i don't foresee me going but there might be a very small chance and i i doubt you're going Haas, and i know gt's not going but for those that have a chance to head on out there have fun good luck uh the acs pro talk guys are, are going uh they actually just reached 200 episodes a couple weeks ago so shout outs to them for keeping with it and being probably one of the um, premier competitive specific Halo podcasts out there. They're doing a, a really good job and they actually had Tashi on for their 200th episode, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be watching. Yeah, I'll be I'll be watching as well as long as there's not other family or holiday commitments might be that might very well be going on for me. <laughs> so so we will see. Yeah. So Let's see. We got some matchmaking updates. Uh, what we got, GT? Or do you have that up with your computer situation currently? Well, thankfully, OneNote is not affected by that. <laughs> provided nobody changes it. Anyway, for this weekend, we've uh, got Community Slayer coming in. And we have Warzone Turbo Live for the weekend. Which, unfortunately, I would be playing neither. Because I'll be busy in Infinite. Right. Yes. I will spare the t- t- turbo time because we'll be playing infinite as, as, as everybody will basically be playing infinite. I think for the most part, very nice. And then what do we've got for MCC? We've got Fiesta coming in. Very nice. No more shoddy snipes. Bye shoddy snipes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got shoddy snipes got put away. Put in the back pocket. Save it for later. Uh, on the MCC and development flight updates, there is a three post long update on the forums regarding the modding tools that they're bringing to MCC. So if you want to read more about 
all the different things that they're doing to get the modding tools working, some of the past history with how the game's changed over the last six years, seven years that the game's been out, then you can head on over to the forums and, and check that out. And any other news type stuff that, that I've missed? I don't, I I'm are, not aware of anything. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we won't keep you guys from hopping into some more infinite. We will not be doing a live show next week, or if we are, it's going to be on a different day since I have folks coming in and will not be able to do a live show during our normal time. So stay tuned to discord and Twitter to know when we're going to be doing that. If we decide to uh, do it on a different day next week Uh, for all of our new folks on Twitch. Thank you so much for coming on over. Uh, Appreciate all the new folks in here and we do have a couple more codes. So if someone needs a code, feel free to go ahead and drop a line in the Twitch chat. We can uh, give you code access to, the PC and the Xbox flight for this weekend. Um, we've got lots of uh, play opportunities. We have uh, GT that will be hosting Frag and Friday starting tomorrow. Will you start at 8.30 still, or will you start at the top of the hour to at the beginning of the session? The late 30? Well, it starts at 7 my time, so... Which is 8, which is 8 Eastern. Right. Yeah, so... Thir- Three minutes earlier, or? Because I, I want to be able to eat dinner and not have to shovel it down my throat. Okay, okay. <laughs> so sticking with 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, that's 5.30 p.m. Pacific. That is 1.30 in the morning, uh, British summertime. That's a little, a little late for some of our friends across the pond, but for those that are available, then feel free to come on over. I will be playing some on Saturday as well, so I might be streaming some additional time on Saturday. GT might as well. Haas might, if he if he cares to stream on the Potacular channel at all. We've also got Achieving Halo. So the last session on Sunday, we'll be finishing it out on uh, Sunday evening as well. So plenty of opportunities for you all to come and play with us if you so choose. It's BTB. It's going to be a uh, party of 12. So plenty of space for you to come on over play with us. Uh, if we got enough people, we might even do multiple lobbies if all of us are on at the same time. I've already talked to several other folks about trying to party up and playing as well, so there is going to be plenty of opportunities this weekend to play. 343 has invited everyone pretty much that is part of Xbox Insider to the flight. Probably even everyone on Xbox at this point might be able to get access to it. But if uh, for some reason you are not on the Xbox flight and you're on PC, it is uh, cross-plat. So Hop on in. Uh, we can party up. And we look forward to seeing you all and playing with you all this weekend. You can check out the podcast on social media. We are on Twitch, Facebook, and Instagram. We also broadcast the podcast and all of our streams on Twitch. You can catch the podcast every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time at podtacular.com slash Twitch. You can join the community over on Discord, podtacular.com slash Discord. That is where we hang out most of the time. and for the times that we go through Tales from the Foxhole, you can drop any cool Halo stories or moments. If you've got clips or funny stories from the flight, please drop it in our Discord. Please uh, hit us up on Twitter. We want to see and hear from all of you all's experience so we can talk about it on the next show, which will be kind of our flight recap and also our 800th show, which will be interesting. Don't know if we'll do something special for that, but nonetheless... A recap of the of the BTB flight overall will be hopefully good things to talk about. We also have our Spartan company for those that would like to help us continue to try to grind for the Achilles helmet in Halo 5. And we've also got our Xbox club. So if you have any clips or screenshots that you take from the flight over the weekend, you can share it to our Xbox club. We'll also take those in consideration for the Tales from the Foxhole segment and just Overall, seeing what the community is up to in the world of Halo. You can find the podcast on all major podcasting services, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Stitcher. We're now on Facebook for podcasts. So if you listen to podcasts through Facebook, you can listen to us there now as well. 
For those that want to support the show, there's a number of ways you can do so. Uh, first of all, is just by sharing the stream. We've got lots of new folks in the stream tonight. I uh, hope to see you all hopefully joining us on some of the play sessions for this weekend. We'd love to play with you all. My gamer tag is Duststorm with a space in the middle. Godzilla is Godzilla T with a space in there. And then you got Hossost, although I think you're, you don't have a space in your gamer tag, right? Or do you? Mm, yes, I do. Yes, you do. Okay, so for those that are watching the stream, the gamer tags are appropriately listed on the stream. And then Haas Sauce is, is Haas Sauced with a space in the middle. So come in and join us. We would love to, to have you and in, in play with you. If you want to support us monetarily, there's a number of ways to do that. Uh, first way is to subscribe to us on Twitch. We've got a few folks that are uh, subscribed to us and have been longtime subscribers, Pins being the longest one. If you aren't subscribed, you can probably just ask Pins for a subscription and he'll probably give you a subscription because that's what he does. Um, <laughs> but if you would like to subscribe to your, on your own, then you are happy to do so. Feel free to do so. We have also got our patrons. We have a Patreon where people can get access to uh, the VODs of the Twitch recording for the podcast and a few other little goodies as well. We have some Potacular merch. And there goes Pins with five more gifted subs to round out the end of the podcast to uh, Vestals, Vacron, Spartan, Zero Geo One, Marker James, and Merciless Chaos. Dang, it didn't even give one to... Uh, Kakrao, who's probably one of the more active people in the chat tonight. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm going to have to fix that here in a minute. We have also uh, got three patrons over there, including Pins, being one of them. Double dipping. Appreciate it, Pins. We've also got Confal and Prestige over there as well. Uh, Prestige, I think, being also one of our only Tier 3 subscribers on Twitch. So, thank you all for your support. If you want to head on over to podtacular.com slash Patreon, you can check out all the different reward tiers that we have over there. And then finally, if you would like to donate to us monetarily or directly, you can do that uh, as well. Um, if you want to avoid the whole Patreon and Twitch thing and just send us money directly, that is an option as well. Podtacular.com slash donate will take you to PayPal so you can uh, donate directly to us that way if you so choose. Obviously, word of mouth does does wonders for getting more exposure and getting people uh, joining the community and listening to the podcast. So that all certainly helps. So we'll hopefully see you all on the flight this weekend. GT Haas, hopefully we'll, we'll actually be able to, to cross some, some games at some point and, and play together. I think it's been a long time since the three of us have actually played a game together. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So... Maybe that will change this weekend. Oh, gosh. At some point. And, and Bio was playing Halo again, so maybe we can convince him to actually play with us for for a little bit. So. We had you know, to do it on the Master Chief Collection. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right. That'll do it for us tonight. Uh, episode 799 in the books. 800 is next. Crazy. All good stuff, though. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you all next time. Keep on fragging them trucks.